Hey, welcome once again. Now we know this is the fun part about uh, the Pesa Pal API. So this the next part that we are going to do. We are going to do something like let's say an SDK push, or let me just see, show you on how, or let me just say this is where you process now your payment where the user can enter his pin, then complete transaction. So I'm going to show you on how you can do that. So once you've done all the previous step that I've shown, now you can come here. This the PESAPAL they call it submit order or request endpoint so I will just name it as submit re order request so that's where you request the customer to complete the payment so that you can know if the payment has been completed or not so you need the these are the demos here and this is what you need you need the ID then you will get that so this you can read this documentation to that but for me here I have already created the code for doing that for here you just come here and do this remember that here you need to write here your phone number for me i will write the phone number as the phone number as 0768 168060 then the amount that i will use it to test is that then the next thing that we are going to do we will set here a callback url or let me just name this uh this you can see here this is the callback url and then here this is the callback url so for us here you can use the ng rock because that's what we need the ng rock i will use the ng rock so i'll just set here the callback url here sorry here the callback url here because that's what I'm using to test it but you can use on live application or a live website so here you will just here set the branch name uh, the branch name you can get it on your Pesaval API remember you can set it from a different API you can see from here you can set like here branches and for me I'll just used I will just use Omiskia software then you will write the customer email this is the customer email so you can write here the first name of the customer the middle name of the customer if he has but if he doesn't have you can leave it as empty then the last name you can set it to that then the customer email here so these are the sandbox sandbox you will use that and then for live is that remember that our application is live then you will get the access token but here the reason why you will not get the access uh, will not use just only the access token you will also use this pin id so what i will do remember that we registered here you this this re, uh, register pin so this is what i'm going to uh, include because this file also contains the access token so there's no need to include the access token i'll just include that because we also need this pin id which the pin id will be used here this is where the pin id will also be used so i will just include here include sorry p and here i'll write include and not access token i will just include the register pin here so because we need that pin id here so you'll replace them here then you can add extra information like city state it depends on the information that you have so that you, the, you can get more details on the customer uh, so it depends you can just add it there if you like but for me i'll just leave it as empty and fill just the necessary information that is needed so that you can do that so here you can see when we do this api request it will show the uh, it will show an sdk push to our side and then we will do so let's see when we do that according to the documentation it states the documentation states that when we do that and we get a success we will get a redirect url this is what we will get now getting a redirect url so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to come here then remove this and get this uh, request where here the registered registered uh, IPN no I'm going to s click this submit order request so when I click submit order request let's see what it will show us when you click submit order request let's wait it to load it's taking a while but you can see we've gotten a success but the redirect URL is this so when you come here and highlight this URL you will get this you will get this let me open it again you will get this page but now remember a customer can't do that 
get this page let me see let me reload let's let's wait it to reload it's taking a while because of the network but it will be just fine it's okay when you get this successful url it means it's okay but you can see from here we get this where the customer can enter his phone number and do the necessary information here but for us here the customer can do this so we will need to redirect automatically this customer to that we will use javascript so let me just do this here once you get this let me get this uh customer redirect url which the url will be there so what i will do i'll remove this then come back here and write uh echo not echo sorry data decode i will decode the response then i will get uh, here the redirect url which will be that so here what i will do i will write echo here not echo redirect i will just do import a javascript function which do that you can do click to pay here but you can write here click to pay so when you do a url it will generate a link here where you can just do click to pay so let me reload that so when you reload let me cancel this first when we reload here we will get this so where you can click to pay and then it will take you to that page but another way of doing this you can just do this you can do that then write echo then the next thing that we'll do we'll write here a javascript file which will write windows.location href so it will redirect automatically once this has been created and then that so let's do this you can see it has redirected that because we use that click link let's now let's return here at request and then reload it again so when we reload you can see this is what it's doing so when we reload here you can see it has actually taken us to this page where you can see it has this has this then it has this so it has redirected that's where the customer can just enter the information then it will be done so from there here let me just put this that's why we are not getting the number only you can see here you, the customer needs to enter the number again so let me come back and reload it again uh, here the submit order so the submit order here the submit order submit order here when you reload you can see we have gotten the customer uh, phone number by just automatically now you can see also in our ipn url here this is our callback then there so when you get this the person will just enter then click proceed then you will get the there uh, you'll get an sdk push so you can see let's see what he will get when he enters the sdk push first let me create this page this page this response then i will echo i will let me echo this php then come here and echo uh, this is the uh, transaction transaction response page so this is where we will process the transaction so let me see show you the importance of this response page.php so from here uh, from here from this submit url you can see this is the response.php that we we set so that when uh, the user has clicked proceed he will get that so let's now start from afresh i will enter the sdk push on my side or if you want to see the sdk push let me set uh, the let me set my phone here let me set my phone so that you can see the sdk push uh occurring lively while uh, while i trigger it from my end you can see that the sdk push so i will set here my uh my my phone then i will set developer mode here then i'll click this so when you set developer mode this is what you should do this is the app that i use to set the api so you can see it's not set there i will come to my device here then set the developer mode as you can see from there you can just view this code from here this is the code 
then let me just come here and run share my android device so that you can see how it's occurring then the next thing you can see now this is my android device when i move it from there this is the information that it's been displayed so let me just minimize this so that you can see uh the whole process is how it's occurring so i will set this to here we cancel this notification then just come here to my phone here then just come here and click uh submit order request so that we can see submit order request and wait it to load uh, so that we can call that api so it will load increase the size of this screen it will load there so here it will show my number the number that we entered in the api then we will click here proceed when i click proceed when i click proceed it will do that and then the sdk push will appear here so this is the sdk push and then after the sdk push has appeared we'll receive that then let me open this uh, then write my pin my mpesa pin here and my phone avoid it because it's there then we will see the next thing that it will happen so i'll click ok there then you can see here in case you didn't receive the prompt just click here so your screen then you can see it automatically load automatically loads itself then i've received your pesa pal in my account then remember my account here you will wait it to uh, to fill this here it automatically redirect to response the response this page then i will show you on how you can do with this response page in order to confirm that the payment is there but from our end here we have received uh, here the pesapal message the pesapal message that we have sent to umeskia software and you can see here at my account here that uh, the balance was 20 shillings and when i reload you will see that it has added the one shillings so let me just do that then login let me do that uh, it will add the, uh, the one shillings here in the invoice so it means let me see on the history you can see the history it has added one shilling because this transaction charges that's why you can see that it has increased by zero so uh, i will show you on the next thing that uh, it has added the 10 shillings i think so from the message here let me see from the message here it has sent the 10 shillings here and the last transaction is 10 shillings and here that the ip the id the id is one one five k which is this so this is the last transaction that has occurred this is the last transaction that has occurred so the last transaction was for 10 shillings so let me now show you how you can do the next uh you can uh, you can do the next processes after you have entered in to check if the transaction is right or if the transaction is wrong so see you in the next video